I urge the world, I urge the United States ruling class to solve immediately the desperate problems of Afghanistan to rescue Afghanistan because it was the United States and its so-called allies that destroyed Afghanistan. The United States and its allies are morally responsible to help rebuild Afghanistan and to bring peace, justice, democracy, prosperity, autonomy, independence, sovereignty to a devastated country. The United States is on trial. In fact, humanity is on trial. History will judge us. So we need a new paradigm. We need a new culture. We need new institutions. And everybody better must listen to it and adopt these and actively promote them. Thank you. Well, Dr. Bahab, you've already partially addressed the area of this question, but this is a question that was directed to you and to Helga, and it was this. Dr. Wahab, I appreciate your emphasizing the importance of a new dialogue of cultures and civilizations to reverse the current doomed trajectory of a unipolar, unipolar order. The Schiller Institute has emphasized the historical role of Ibn Sina in transforming Afghanistan and making it the center of a new world health system. Uh, Helga named the initiative Operation Ibn Sina to capture both the proud tradition of Afghanistan as the pearl of the nations of the world. Uh, could you speak to the importance of Ibn Sina in establishing a new dialogue of cultures? I would defer to Ms. Helga first and then I would add a few, a few notes. Okay. Please. Well, I... Obviously, what you say about the condition of Afghanistan is more than true. This country has been subdued to 40 years of war. And when the NATO left in August last year, they cut the budget by 80 percent by you know, stopping the money of the donor country. So the country was all of a sudden on top of the destruction of the previous war and one could see very clearly that these 20 years of NATO war were not used to build up anything. There was no economy, there is no health system. And given the fact that we still have a pandemic and a famine on top of it, uh, I said, why don't we start with building a health system, uh, you know, because of the co Corona pandemic. And, you know, given the fact that Avicenna, as he is called in the West, or Ibn Sina, uh, his father was born in Balkh, which is near Ma'a Sharif in the north of Afghanistan, and he himself was born in Afshana in Uzbekistan. Uh, why not name the effort to rescue Afghanistan according to him? He was one of the great doctors of all of universal history. He's on an equal level like Galen or Hi Hippocrates, uh, and he contributed a canon of medicine, which uh, was the standard book in, in medical science, even in Europe until the 17th, 18th century. But he was also a great philosopher. Uh, he developed conceptions which are still extremely important for modern science. Like, for example, he discussed a proof of the immortality of the human soul, which I can only encourage all our viewers to watch because to think about the immortality of the soul is a very, very important question for the identity of human beings. Because if you think that you are just a, you know, accidental CO2 footprint who disappears after you're dead, then that has tremendous implications for your morality. And Ibn Sina developed a beautiful image of the immortality of the soul. And he also had such ideas like about the eternity of the universe. Now, this is a very deep fundamental question. You know, is the universe, did it, was it created? Did it occur with a big bang or was there anything before? Now, this is a very, if you start thinking about it, it's really the most profound or one of the most profound questions that the James Webb telescope hopefully will give us some answers about the structure, what happened before the so-called Big Bang happened, which is questionable if, if, if it did indeed occur in this way. Now, that is why I thought that you need um, a figure who represents the pride 
and the absolute best intellectual tradition of Afghanistan to give a people which has gone through so much hardship for 40 years and many centuries before, but especially the last 40 years, you need to have a vision of a golden future. And that region of the world was once called Bactria and the land of the thousand cities. And, you know, there are now uh, even new architect, uh, archaeological findings which pertain to that golden period where there was a very rich developed uh, bronze uh, uh, culture and uh, artifacts are being found which must be preserved. So there is a, you know, there, you need an inspiration, you know, this is why the Schiller Institute is called Schiller Institute, because what we want to do is we want to have, we were created, I, I created the Schiller Institute 34 years now, is it? No, it's longer. Anyway, uh, 38 years <clears throat> uh, with the idea that we need a just new world economic order and that we need a new renaissance of classical culture and a new paradigm. So nothing has changed in our approach. And when I was thinking, you know, how, how would I name such an effort? I came up with no nothing better than the image of Friedrich Schiller because he has the most beautiful image of man, the beautiful soul, the limitless perfectibility of the creative reason. So, you know, in any case, that is why Ibn Sina, I think, is a, a absolutely inspiring idea to have a better future for Afghanistan. And I think that idea is uh, very becoming more and more popular by uh, many exiled Afghanis who, you know, really, you know, they have a desire to help to rebuild the country. So I just uh, want to say, you know, we are not giving up on Operation Ibn Sina just to the contrary. We are totally de determined that that becomes the beginning of a much better future of Afghanistan.